all right. Well, you know, it is back to school day. And with back to school, we all start to think about learning and different ways of learning. And we're going to focus on a couple of different ways. And, and one of them involves dance. It's kind of intriguing. Well, Miranda Abbott joins us right now. She is a dancer, a choreographer, and she is also the creator of a program that's called Dance Equations. That's using dance to, am I right, to work with math equations, Miranda? Absolutely, yes. So to talk a little bit about dance equations, how it works. Well, dance equations, I wanted to marriage mathematics and dance. Actually, I should say they're already uh, part of one another. It's just we don't necessarily um, see it. Even a dancer might not see it, um, and a mathematician might not see it. But we can pull it out very easily that dance is math and math is dance, and so why not use them together? I wanted to create a program that was authentically dance, not just um, uh, a clap and stomp kind of routine, but something that could also be a tool for teachers in the classroom to teach the dance curriculum, since it is in our curriculum, sorry, in the Ontario curriculum, and also something that is authentically math. So bridge them two together. Okay, you've got me intrigued and so intrigued that when we come back, I'm going to get you to explain a little bit more about dance's equations and how we can put that into the curriculum for us. Will you Absolutely. stay with us? Absolutely. Okay, back with more daytime in a moment. Well, have you ever thought about marrying dance and math together? Well, that's exactly what our next guest is always thinking about because she's created a program called Dance Equations. This is Miranda Abbott, dancer, choreographer, and also creator of Dance Equations. And you, you put these two, I, I guess I say together, but that's really wrong because they were, were in your mind always together, dance and, and math. When I'm, when I'm first working with a teacher uh, and they have a lot of questions about the program, I talk about maybe some of the early mathematical concepts. So you think about symmetry, translations, rotations, reflections. Obviously, these are all spatial mathematics, and that is directly what we are learning in dance. I mean, from a young age, even before kindergarten, if a, if a child is taking dance class, they are learning how to sit in a circle. They're learning how to turn 90 degrees to the side. They're learning um, mathematical um, patterns so like in a ballet class a very typical exercise is to do you know eight tondus on the right and eight on the left and then four and then four and then two and then two and then one and then one so we see that is a ma mathematical um, pattern so in dance it's kind of already there it's just bringing it to light once we start to talk about it we start to see that a lot of it is there and now I want the the teacher to be able to say oh yes I can teach dance and I can do this um, we, we have the stigma sometimes with dance, I think, that, um, oh, I can't dance, or how does a teacher teach dance? It, it's funny when you say that, because when you're talking about, you know, dance and incorporating dance in the classroom, I think, great for the kids, especially, you know, the younger ones, to get them up and moving, and, and younger the kids, the more intrinsically they dance. They're just mm -hmm. made to move, so to get them up and moving, I think, is a great thing. I think the bigger challenge is probably getting the adult portion <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to buy into this and say, okay, I, I can do this or feel comfortable doing it. I think we see a lot of shows where we see dance as being just very technical. And dance, although it can be very obviously very technical, you learn um, a style and you, you become a professional in that style. We have to start with the basics. And the basics of dance are space, time, force, and body. And also, there's a lot of exploration that goes on. Someone created ballet, and someone created jazz, and someone created hip hop. But really, we can explore movement. So I try and show the teachers how they can do it through creative movement, rather than teaching like five, six, seven, eight, and through just putting on music and letting the kids explore through structured improvisations. They can pull in other classroom themes as well. So. Um, they can use what they already know instead of being like, oh my gosh, on top of everything that I am required with math, science, history, and everything else, I have to teach dance. So I'm trying to provide like this really step-by-step -step concrete where, yes, I explain the exercises, there's worksheets to use, there's, um, there's diagrams and things you can print, but also just understanding that, you know, the kids have to start with high, medium, low, and in the air and exploring space. Um, okay. So then it's structuring it. So 
could you give me a, like a quick example of when you're working with the teachers, how you incorporate this back into the classroom, how you're going to say, okay, it's math time, instead of opening the books, let's all get up and this is what we're gonna do today. Move the desks, I mean, well, we, we hear a lot about like cognitive learning and different learning styles and, and, um, and uh, we all know that kids love to move. It's very easy to say, okay guys, we're gonna move the desks, let's all get up, let's, let's set a space and let's explore something different. Um, also just reiterating ideas that you're already doing and say, okay, now we're gonna apply it. A lot of kids go, oh, well, when am I gonna do this again? But when they see like a direct application for something, I think it's, it's very different. And also for the children who learn differently, who cannot sit there and always be either, you know, writing and filling in assignments and, and papers in a written style, they, they want to get up and move. It works great. I've worked with kids that were semi or uh, partially blind or fully blind and teaching them concepts that the teachers didn't really know how to teach them maybe with the same tools. Right. And also like ESL and and it was always amazing when I worked with a class, the teacher would say, oh, I didn't think so-and-so understood that. Oh, now I know he understands angles, you know, because there's a direct application. So it's also a, a time-saving mechanism. It's like, well, I'm not going to... Uh, create an assignment and hand it out and get everybody to write their name and fill it in and then bring it home and mark it in my spare time. I'm going to walk around the room, everybody's going to be following their partner, doing a symmetrical dance, and you're going to see directly who understands symmetry and who doesn't. Why well, write a paper on what oscillating is and a or ask someone to oscillate? <laughs> you know, so it also is that. So how can, how can you look at it in this really simple manner? How can you bring math and, and dance together and use it, but also bring in maybe a science unit and maybe bring in, uh, you have a, a, a presentation coming up for the, the winter concert and you need something. So let's make up a dance based on snowflakes, which we're studying in science. Let's make it symmetrical and then let's make it a mathematical equation at the same time. What a great idea. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of this from a, a child perspective, from a younger child, but in the video we're seeing teenagers that are involved in dance equations too. So this really carries all the way yeah. through. I started to use in my own choreography, um, because that's kind of where this all kind of came from, was out of my dance company, that numbers are symbols, and lots of different civilizations have used different numbers as symbols. Um, we have different, uh, we have a base 10 number system, but base 20 number systems, there's lots. And when we start talking in numbers, it's, it's kind of endless. So I started using dance as symbols. So creating uh, other movement phrases or just steps. And so then you can make a dance based on digital code. You can make a dance based on algebraic equations. You can make a dance based on calculus. So now I can see them in Google right here in NKW doing this. And yeah, absolutely. Can, they could do that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and the great thing is because you are located here in KW, if there are mm -hmm. teachers out there that want to find out more, they can contact yes. you through the website. It's all online, so I am working actually globally with it. Um, the kids that you see in the video are actually from Costa Rica. So um, I provide free online support, but the book is all digital, so you get it right away. You can Skype me, talk to me, and I'll make sure that you understand and that it can be implemented. What a great program. Thanks for joining us, Miranda. Thank you very much okay. for having me. All right, when we come back, we'll get into those back-to-school routines. You can find out how. Stay with us.